Now let's begin our discussion on a specific type of pericyclic reaction known as the electrocyclic reaction. Now recall that a pericyclic reaction is a concerted reaction in which the transition state is cyclical. So there are two types of electrocyclic reactions. We have thermal electrocyclic reactions in which the energy source is heat and we have photochemical electrocyclic reactions in which the energy comes from light. In this lecture we're going to focus on the thermal electrocyclic reaction. Now what exactly is an electrocyclic reaction in the first place? How do we define it? Well basically electrocyclic reactions are pericyclic reactions in which there is a net result of a pi bond being transformed into a sigma bond or the reverse, a sigma bond is being transformed into a pi bond. And the electrocyclic reaction that we're going to focus on in this lecture is the transformation of cis 3 4 cyclobutene into a butadiene molecule. So basically what happens is this sigma bond breaks and it forms a pi bond between this carbon and this carbon and this pi bond breaks off and goes on to form a pi bond between this carbon and this carbon. So the net result in this electrocyclic reaction going in the forward direction is the transformation of a sigma bond into a pi bond. If we go in reverse, the opposite is true. There is a transformation from a pi bond into a sigma bond. So basically we take the cis 3, 4 uh, cyclobutene in which these two R groups point in the same direction above the board and that's why we call it cis. So if we add heat the following molecule is formed a butadiene. The question is there are three different possible isomers that can form. We have a trans-trans butadiene, we have a trans-cis or a cis-trans butadiene and we have the cis-cis butadiene. Basically, the trans means that the H groups points this way and the H group here points in the opposite direction. That's why we have trans. And in this case, the two H groups point in the same direction. So this double bond is cis and here our two H groups also point in the same direction and that's why it's cis. And the same thing can be said about these other two isomers. So which isomer is actually formed? Are all three isomers possible? And the answer is no. Under thermal conditions, only one isomer will form of our butadiene, and it's this isomer, let's call it isomer 2. Only the trans cis or the cis trans will form under thermal conditions. The question is why? Why is there this preference on the thermal conditions for our cis 3, 4 cyclobutene to transform specifically into the trans cis or the cis trans isomer of butadiene? Well, to answer this question, we have to take a look at the orbital interaction. We have to try to understand how the orbitals actually interact when we undergo this thermal electrocyclic reactions. Now, instead of focusing on the forward reaction, it will make things easier if we instead focus on the reverse reaction. Remember, it doesn't really matter which way we go, the same result basically works when we go in this direction or in the reverse direction, as we'll see towards the end of this lecture. So, once again, in order to answer this question, we have to examine the orbital interaction during this electrocyclic reaction. But instead of looking at the forward reaction, instead of going from this molecule to this molecule, we're going to go in reverse. We're going to form our cyclobutene from this trans-cis or cis-trans butadiene molecule. 
Now, the next question that we have to answer is, what are the molecular orbitals, what are the pi molecular orbitals of this butadiene, of the 1,3 butadiene molecule? Now, actually, we already spoke about the molecular orbitals of 1,3 butadiene in a previous lecture. And if you're not sure how we can build the pi molecular orbitals of this molecule, I'll link you up here and just click that link and watch that lecture. So I'm going to assume that you know how to form all the four pi molecular orbitals of our 1,3-butadiene. So basically, our concept is as follows. We have one, two, three, four carbon atoms. Each one of those carbon atoms donates a 2p orbital to actually form this molecule, and so four 2p orbitals combine to form four pi molecular orbitals of the trans cis 1,3 butadiene. So butadiene contains four pi molecular orbitals. Now, how many valence electrons are found within the pi bonding system? So we have one, two uh, double bonds. So we have one, two pi bonds. Each pi bond contains two electrons. So we have one, two, three, four pi electrons. And since we have the four electrons and we have four different orbitals and each one of these orbitals can hold a maximum of two electrons, we see that two electrons go into, uh, go into the lowest orbital, the phi 1, and the other two electrons go into the next energy orbital, the phi 2. So basically this is the energy diagram that describes the energy level of our four pi molecular orbitals of this trans cis 1,3 butadiene. Now, in any chemical reaction, it's the valence electrons that are responsible for creating bonds and breaking bonds. And it's the valence electrons that are least tightly held to the nucleus of our molecule that are involved in our reaction. So, remember, the higher in energy our electrons, the farther away the electrons are from the nucleus, and the less tightly those electrons will be held to the nucleus. So we see that in any chemical reaction, the valence electrons that are least strongly held will be the ones that will participate in the reaction. Therefore, the two electrons in the highest occupied molecular orbital, also known as HOMO, so it's the phi 2 orbital, that will be involved in our reaction. So the phi 2 is the highest occupied molecular orbital of the HOMO of the 1,3-butadiene. And if you watch that lecture where we build our molecular orbitals of this molecule, the phi 2 corresponds to this molecular orbital. So this is the phi 2 pi bonding molecular orbital. So we have our first carbon, second carbon, third carbon, fourth carbon. So first carbon, second carbon, third carbon, fourth carbon. These two orbitals basically align so that the, gr uh, the green regions align on the bottom, the blue regions align on the top. For these, for the third and fourth carbon, the greens are now on top, the blue are now on the bottom. So if we twist it this way, this will be our diagram. And this is the pi molecular orbital of butadiene that will be involved in our reaction. So now we know what the pi bonding molecular orbital actually looks like. So now, let's actually undergo this reverse reaction. So the question that we want to ask next is, how exactly should these orbitals uh, overlap? How should they rotate to actually form our sigma bond between the first carbon and the fourth carbon? So basically, a sigma bond is formed between carbon number one and carbon number four. And to actually form this bond, these two orbitals have to overlap. But in order to overlap, they first have to rotate. The question is, how will these two orbitals actually rotate? So there are four different possibilities for our rotation, and let's examine each one of these possibilities. 
So let's suppose that this orbital here rotates in a counterclockwise direction and this orbital also rotates in a counterclockwise direction. So if these rotate this way, 90 degrees, that is called a con rotation. And if this takes place, the two green sections, the positive sections, will overlap and that will form a bond, a sigma bond. So this is one possible rotation that will lead to a sigma bond. Now the other con rotation that could take place is if instead of rotating counterclockwise, these two orbitals rotate clockwise. If they rotate clockwise, the blue regions or the negative regions will overlap, also forming a bond as shown. Now, what about if this rotates in this direction clockwise, but this rotates counterclockwise? In this case, we'll have a blue a lobe here, a green lobe here, and that will not form a bond. And the same thing is true in the case if they both go this way, so one goes in the counterclockwise, the one, the other goes in our clockwise. So basically we do not form a bond in this case. So basically when they rotate in the same direction that is known as a con rotation. If they rotate in opposite directions that is known as a disrotation. And we see that for thermal electrocyclic reactions, the only type of rotation of the orbitals that actually leads to the creation of a bond is a con rotation. So, now that we have that out of the way, let's go back in this direction so we know that going this way, only a con rotation will work. And that means going in this direction from the cyclobutene to the butadiene, only the con rotation will work. So let's begin with our cis 3,4 cyclobutene as shown. So basically, these two orbitals have to rotate 90 degrees in the same direction, either this way or out of the board, to actually form our butadiene. Because going this way and going this way, the same type of rotation must exist. So if they rotate this way 90 degrees, then this R group will point this way, but this R group will point this way. So we have a cis trans isomer that is formed. If it goes the other way, we'll form a trans cis. But if we have an opposite, a disrotation taking place, which is not a rotation that will actually lead to a bond, then we form the cis set, uh, the cis cis, or if they rotate this way, we form the trans trans. So we see, because the disrotation will not actually allow us to form a bond, the disrotation for thermal electrocyclic reactions will not take place. It's only the con rotation that will actually lead to forming of this bond. So that means going in reverse, it's only the con rotation that will form our isomer. Specifically, it will form the trans cis or the cis trans isomer and these reactions are known as thermal electrocyclic reactions.